And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. All right, you see these guys? These are homunculus, I think is how you say them. It means tiny man in Latin. Uh, they look pretty good. Uh, put together of nine parts and all nine parts match. This is what the game is all about. And here's mine. Doesn't look quite as good. Let's look at melodies. Okay. Uh, maybe these need a little bit more work yet. Oh, I guess we should take a moment to say... Welcome to the Dice Tower! And the game we're talking about, if you haven't seen the intro thing, there was is Kazam. Now, Kazam is the kind of game that I've always wanted to make as a child and, and like playing. I like games that let you put pieces together and make your own monster. And that's basically what this game is. In fact, that's all this game is, is you're trying to make a monster and you're trying to make the most interesting, or actually the most point-worthy monster. At the beginning of the game, each player starts out with a sheet which shows which kind of monster you prefer, and up here in the corner shows which ingredient is your preferred ingredient. On a player's turn, they have three actions that they can take, and they can do the same one more than once. It's up to them. The first action that they can do is there will be a draw pile on the table, and they can simply take the top one from the draw pile and place it in their hand. However, they can only have six tiles at the most in their hand. Each tile has a body part, and it's pretty easy to figure out which each one is as long as you keep the icons at the top. These icons at the top are different ingredients. You have mandrakes, you have sulfur, you have quicksilver, you have dragon's blood, you have phoenix feathers, and you have unicorn horns. I don't know how you get piles of those, but what have you. Another action you can take on your turn is to discard a tile from your hand, and when you do so, you will get the, th the ingredients that are shown on that tile. You get those. Not only that, you also get one ingredient of your, cho well, actually not of your choice, but of the kind that is your favorite alchemist ingredient. As an aside here, that sounds really neat, but after a while you'll have 10 unicorn horns that you don't know what to do with, and so we just took a few of them at the beginning and then just held off until we needed them again. But you can always take one of those whenever you get rid of one of these tiles. Then, you can put one of these tiles out on the board. Uh, to put the tile on the board, I need to play the three ingredients that it, it shows, and then I put it on the board, and I have that, that piece there. Then finally, or not finally, you have two more things you can do. You can use your parts. Uh, if I flip over the hand, I can use the special action that flipping over a hand gives me. If I flip over the head, I get to use that special action. And then my final action would be to flip all my, un all my flip tiles back up. The different tiles, when you flip them over, do different things. For example, uh, when you flip over an ear, it allows you to look at someone else's hand. If you flip over a hand, you allow to, you're allowed to draw a random tile from someone else's hand. If you flip over a leg, you can go through the discard pile and take one tile of your choice into your hand. If you flip over the torso of your monster, you get three ingredients from the ingredient pool, anything you want. If you flip over the tail, that's offensive towards the other player. If that, you can pick one of their tiles and force it to flip over. Or you can pick a tile that they have flipped over and have not flipped back up, and you can destroy it. And then finally, if you flip over the head, you basically cancel a tile that someone else has played. Usually this is done in a defensive way. They're coming after your hand, flip it. They're trying to destroy one of your tiles, flip it. So the game between the tail uh, and the hand can become very offensive where you go after the tiles that the other person has. You continue playing until finally one person finishes their monster. At that point, everyone's monster is scored. Hands, legs, and ears all score one point each. Uh, the head, torso, and tail are all worth two points each. So if you complete your monster completely, if you finish it completely, you score 12 points. You also get bonus points. If your monster is made up of all the same kind, for example, if my monster is all the pink fluffy pieces, even if I don't have a finish, if that's the only thing I have on my monster, then it's plus one point for each one. Also, whichever person you pick has a favorite monster. So for example, this woman's favorite monster is the pink fluffy one. She gets one point for every pink fluffy piece in hers. Yes, Melody. That's Melody's favorite. All right, now die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's basically it. And if you're the person who finishes the game, which means you finished your monster first, you get plus four points. It's very simple. Um, the ingredient mix seems to work out well. 
The only problem I notice in the game, it's not necessarily a problem, it's just like I said, this key ingredient that you that your alchemist wants, you get so much of it that it's just not worth taking after a while. The components were okay. They look good. They're nice and thick. They're glossy. The artwork's wonderful. But when punching them out, I was constantly ripping tiles, and I had to cut some of them out. It just wasn't a great production. And this box, I don't even know what this is. This here, folks, garbage. Okay, because these tiles don't fit in it. These papers don't fit in it. These tokens, I had to bag them anyway. They don't fit in it. What's the point of it? Okay. That shouldn't stop you from buying a game. This is what? This is no great strategic game. This is a game where you're building a monster. Everyone else is building monsters. <laughs> you use your monster to 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 attack other people. And really, there's not much more to it than that. It's a fast game. It takes about 30 minutes. The ingredients, you don't have to think too hard. You look and say, hey, I need these ingredients to build this arm. Well, where are those ingredients? How do I get them? Once your monster is 50% complete, you'll start using the parts of it to really help it, and it, the game will spiral down to a finish much quicker after that point. I like it. Somebody it's not ever going to be one of my favorite games. Um, it's not going to be a game that I think is really strategic, but I like the idea of building the monsters, and you get to put together some pretty funny monsters with all these tiles. I believe there's 70 tiles in the game, um, and you can make a huge variety of monsters from those. What do you think of it? I like how you make monsters and you can pick a character who you like and some of them are really cute too. Cute monsters. Yeah, but weird ingredients. Really weird ingredients. Why would somebody want feathers? Yeah, that's okay. Well, that's because she'll never be an alchemist. You just don't understand the importance of phoenix feathers. I, I go more for the humor, but there is maybe some strategy where I say, is it better to finish half of a monster, but he's all the same, or to finish a whole monster and get the whole points? It doesn't really matter. Because in 30 minutes, you have a good time. You'll put the game away. You probably won't want to play it twice in a row, but you'll bring it out again. Light and easy with funny artwork. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.